This is Lou Dobbs and Doctor, totally not a legitimate doctor, Keith Ablo on the uh, Boston bombings. Let's listen and then we'll talk about it afterwards. The reaction of Bostonians, uh, Americans across the country, uh, I, at least in, in media, uh, was not the one of anger that I would have expected uh, and there were, that we witnessed uh, in September 11th, for example. Uh, there has been, it seems like a more of a, a, an inward uh, reflection, if you will, uh, about individual emotions, about, uh, about what has transpired. Perhaps it's because we know so little uh, about who uh, perpetrated this, uh, this horrible crime. Uh, but it does seem different. I expect more rage and less, uh, if you will, an expression of vulnerability. Uh, but that's what I see, at least in the media. Well, it's tough to focus your rage when you don't know the perpetrator. Right. And I, I think that's part of the formula here. Uh, the other thing is that uh, I think folks uh, are finding that uh, because we do embrace values, that others uh, wish to attack. If this does turn out to be a terrorist, that perhaps we're learning what Israel has learned, what other countries have learned, that when you embrace ideals that are powerful about freedom, truths we hold to be self-evident, that people will attack you. It's because of our light that darkness comes. Uh, and if there's to be anger, Lou, I'll tell you where my anger is. My anger is at the folks who are putting forward gun control measures when we just saw pressure cooker bombs with nails and, and ball bearings kill people in Boston. We just had a knife attack that maimed 14 people in Texas, and people were paid and elected are on Capitol Hill talking about gun control that will do nothing to stem any of this violence. That makes me angry. And extraordinarily, I, it, it, those legislators, everyone to whom the question has been put, acknowledges uh, that uh, the universal background check, for example, would not have changed the, uh, the one whit what happened in Sandy Hook. Uh, it, it, it's a peculiar time. There seems to be a sense it, of entitlement on the part of many Americans that somehow they don't have to be responsible for themselves and that they have no obligation to protect themselves, their families, their communities in the face of these horrific threats. I That's awesome. That last part was awesome. You know, American people feel like they're entitled to, you know, have some sort of protection and they don't want to protect themselves. So the police officers are an entitlement? I'm not saying it. That's what you're implying. But God, man, that's so silly. How could you really think that? Hey, what is this? Uh, 1792 on the frontier in westward expansion in Wyoming. Don't expect the cops to come. Just, you know, have your musket and get ready to defend yourself against uh, the Indians or something or bears. Uh, come on, Luke. Wake, wakey, wakey. Come on. What are you talking about? Police aren't an entitlement. We pay for them. It's not an entitlement. And then I'm going back to the beginning here. I love how Lou starts out by saying, you know, it's interesting because the media seems to be uh, thinking about it and, and analyzing and talking about what's going on here instead of being in a rage. That's weird. They should just be in a rage like we were after 9-11. Who yearns for that? When we were in a national panic, we closed our eyes, our idiot uh, hillbilly cowboy uh, wannabe president well, like, yeah, we got to invade Iraq and Afghanistan and name, uh, throw a dart at the board, whatever other Middle Eastern country it's on, we'll invade there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the problem, Lou. We weren't thinking. And furthermore, I don't even necessarily see that. I think the reaction was kind of similar to 9 11. Uh, it was wall to wall coverage on every news channel, and it was nobody was giving thoughtful analysis. They were just like, boom, this is happening, that's happening, be afraid, yeah. So he's wrong about what he's talking about. And furthermore, who wants them to be in just a rage and not think? I don't. Uh, and then Ablo's the best. We go from having a conversation about the Boston bombings, right? All of a sudden, uh, they're blaming liberals. What, blaming liberals for what? If there's anybody that's not guilty in what happened here, liberals are not guilty. They have nothing to do with the bombing. What are you talking about? But they go, oh yeah, because uh, they're gun control. What does gun control have anything to do with the, bombing, the bombs that went off? 
Oh, well, we would have been able to protect ourselves if we had guns. Oh, yeah, G brilliant, man, brilliant. I love how they, they pretend like gun control won't do anything. Nothing could be further from the truth. First of all, if you're talking about the assault weapons ban, all the evidence in the world points to the fact that the assault weapons ban and the high-capacity magazine ban will make a difference. Just look at Australia. You know, they had uh, 12 mass shootings before 1996. They, they passed those laws in 96. None since. Right? Look at all the other uh, European nations, the industrial nations. They have less than 100 gun deaths on average per year. We have 30 a day. We have 11,000 uh, per year. We know it makes a difference. And then, oh, when they say that background checks won't make a difference. Oh, come on, that's got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Did you know it's still legal for people on the terrorist watch list to buy guns in the United States? Who's in favor of that? Who thinks that's a debatable issue? Go ask a room full of 100 people. How many of you want uh, suspected terrorists to be able to get guns legally? Crickets. Nobody's in favor of that. And then to pretend like it wouldn't affect any of these mass shootings, dude, I don't know if you know this, the Virginia Tech shooting in 07, uh, the brother of one of the people who got killed who's been fighting for uh, good gun legislation since then, uh, he talks about all the time how if there was a uh, a national registry and a universal background check in place, the guy wouldn't have been able to get the gun legally because he had mental issues, the one who committed the shooting. Not only that, 75% of the guns used in the mass shootings are bought legally. So even if you make a dent in that 5%, which it probably won't be, by the way, it'll be more than that, then you've already had a massive effect in a positive direction and you're preventing a lot of deaths. Uh, Fox News is unbelievable. You know what I learned from that clip? There is nothing that pushes Fox News Neanderthals off of their talking points.